Hamilton Temple Blackwood was by all accounts a remarkable man. In 1862, he was created the first Marquis of Dufferin and Arthur as recognition for his service in the diplomatic corps for Queen Victoria's government. Service which included six years as the Governor General of Canada. But his distinguished career is of only minor importance to this story. The story of a dreadful warning which he received in 1883. At that time, he'd taken a brief break from a heavy work schedule, completing a report on diplomatic arrangements in Egypt, and had gone to stay with friends at a large country house near Tullamore in Ireland. Lord Dufferin was in bed late one night when he suddenly awoke with a feeling of great dread for which he could find no logical reason. He then became aware of the sound of moaning cries coming from the garden outside the French windows of his room. He got out of bed and went to the windows and looked out into the garden despite the feeling of near terror which was growing in him. The moon was full and the sky clear and he was able to see the garden in perfect clarity. He became aware of a dark shadow moving across the lawn, the figure of a man with what appeared to be a large box on his shoulder which seemed to be weighing him down. Lord Dufferin threw open the French windows and ran out onto the lawn, shouting to the figure to stop. It did, and at that moment Lord Dufferin realized to his horror that the box the man was carrying was in fact a coffin. As the Marquis approached the mystery man, he turned slowly so that he was facing Lord Dufferin, who stopped stricken with horror. The man's face was incredibly ugly, so hideous that it momentarily stunned Lord Dufferin. He then took another step towards the grotesque visitor, but the figure vanished, along with its frightening burden. The Marquis made his way back to his room, and having made sure that the French doors were firmly locked, he wrote down in his diary the events as they had happened and as I have just described. The following morning, he told his hosts and fellow guests of what had happened during the night. No one could recognize the mystery man from Lord Dufferin's description, nor could his hosts help to explain the happening with stories of any relevant local ghosts. The general opinion was that Lord Dufferin had suffered from a particularly vivid nightmare. And this was probably what he too believed as the years went by, if he ever recalled the incident. But it was all to come back to him with terrifying clarity ten years later. For in 1893, Lord Dufferin was ambassador to France and went one night to an official reception for the diplomats of various countries which was to be held at the Grand Hotel in Paris. Lord Dufferin and his secretary arrived at the hotel to find the foyer crowded with the members of the various foreign embassies. All were waiting for the lift to transport them a few at a time to the reception room on the third floor. Lord Dufferin and his secretary joined the waiting throng of embassy officials and the line moved slowly forward towards the lift. Finally, Dufferin reached the head of the queue and was in conversation with his secretary and a member of the French diplomatic service. He turned as the lift arrived and was about to enter when he saw the face of the lift attendant. He stopped, rooted to the spot with shock and horror. The man's face was incredibly ugly, utterly repulsive. But 
that was not the only reason for Lord Dufferin's recoiling. It was the face of the man he had seen, with his terrifying burden in the moonlit garden ten years before. As the other potential passengers pressed forward, Dufferin seized his secretary's arm and drew the younger man aside. The lift filled up, and Dufferin, by now in a state of great agitation, went in search of the manager to make inquiries concerning the repulsive lift attendant. But even as the two diplomats were walking across the foyer, they heard a sound behind them, which spun them on their heels and sent them racing back to the lift doors. The sound had been a loud creaking, followed by a great snapping sound. Then immediately after, a series of horrified screams and the unmistakable sound of the lift rushing down the shaft at great speed. This ended with a final tremendous crash as the lift hit the bottom of the shaft. For a while, all was confusion. Then the hotel staff, under the guidance of the manager, forced open the doors to discover the carnage in the lift shaft. The cable had snapped and the lift had plummeted three floors carrying all its occupants to their doom, including the attendant with the hideously ugly face. Perhaps it was a warning to Lord Dufferin which saved his life. Who can tell? But there is a strange postscript to the story. Despite the obvious publicity which the case attracted in the press, and diligent inquiries by the police, no one ever came forward to claim the body of the attendant, nor even to identify him. And the manager, when Dufferin questioned him, confessed himself at a loss. The man who had guided the lift on its final fatal trip was a casual worker only hired that day. Who he was was not, and never will be known. At least, not this side of the grave.